when imaging with a microscope, it's important to assure that you're operating within the ranges of the system. Nowhere is this more apparent than with the detection settings of a camera and the number of photons that you've got entering into the system. Those two, the photon producer and the photon catcher, work in tandem. So we're going to talk about them in detail together. The range of a system's detector can easily be displayed with this histogram button located in the image display window. I'm going to go ahead and activate that. And this will give us a graphic demonstration of the number of pixels in the Y axis at each gray level displayed here across the X axis of the detector. Now this is helpful because a pixel on a camera that creates the pixel on the image is ultimately limited by the range displayed here. If we collect more photons converted to electrons within that pixel, then ultimately it will overflow. And as the electrons overflow that capacity, we lose both information and the attractiveness of an image. So we want to operate within that range and avoid any saturation. Now let's look at the histogram in conjunction with my personal favorite way of setting my exposure time, altering the lookup table from a pseudo color of green or a raw grayscale into this heat map. So the heat map gives us the same information about our fill within each pixel using a easier to see variation of colors as it goes through our reds into oranges, yellows, and whites. Our eyes can pick out a little clearer the variation in intensity. And in this case, we also get this beautiful blue indicator of saturation. So if I maximize the number of photons going into the system, we see these huge areas displayed in blue are our saturated pixels where the pixels are just overflowing with electrons. So we need to reduce our exposure time to get back within the range of the system. Or equally, we can reduce the number of photons that are entering into the system. Now the exposure time is going to affect how long a total experiment time is or the interval between a time lapse if you're trying to go fast. So it might be beneficial to have more photons entering into the system and reduce your exposure time to be able to keep within the range of the system but also respect the other dimensional data that you need to get. Equally, you can further reduce your exposure time by applying an analog gain with this particular camera. As the gain increases, you saw saturation, we can reduce our exposure time in that way as well. Still getting an attractive image, but we do start to increase the total noise that's coming into the system with the gain as well. So we've got to use those sparingly. The histogram additionally can be brought up in the camera display window here, in which case we can get rid of it here and have a nice big image and combine these two different modal modalities or tools to see where we are within the range of the system. Last but not least, as I've traveled around, I've had my users teach me a neat little trick as well. If I go back to my traditional pseudo coloring here for this channel in green, and I turn on my auto scale located directly beneath that button, now the display is going to automatically jump between the highest and lowest value pixels indicated by these little balls here. So if I hit live on my system now, I can see that I've got some saturation with that top nod sitting directly on that high value. So as I start to bring these values down, we'll see it bounce around the 70-80% mark here. So we're filling about 80% of our pixels. And that might be an easier way for you to quickly establish an exposure time if your exposure times can change frequently. Equally, if you quickly move back into a preview setting where you're looking for the next area, you might find it very beneficial to drop down to a lower exposure time, say 65 milliseconds for a nice fast refresh, and the auto contrast will keep the scale displayed down here in the bottom so you can still see what you're looking at but reduce the total duration of time you have to stare. And once you have your exposure time set the way you like it, it's very easy to navigate on to the next channel by clicking in the box and confirming that each channel has an exposure time within the range of the system and adjusting where necessary. Once you have all the exposure time set the way you like, it's also very easy to save. 
simply click this disk icon here, apply a name, and hit save, and you can easily pull those settings back in and use them to populate a more complex experiment with additional dimensions later.